Right, so today's planting is yet again starting with yesterday's planting. So first up today we have Little Thicta Bottle. Now this is a tree that really should be in full sun in theory. It's a diaspirus though, so it's possible that if I can get it growing in somewhere that is going to be easier to keep it going without lots and lots of watering all the time, then I can eventually try grafting it onto one of our more hardy native diaspirus, uh, which are significantly cheaper even if I don't manage to grow them from seed myself which shouldn't be that hard. I have thrown a few jackalberry uh, seeds around and if they do come up more than I want then potentially this could be, you know, grafted onto those because I know it can be grafted onto some of the species of persimmon as well. So it's a diaspirus is the ebonies and persimmons and jackalberries and this is probably the most coveted all of them. It's called Little Ticta Bottle in its, its sort of original domestication. Uh, that is an Nahuatl word which literally would translate to black sapote or if you were going to go all English on that black soap apple, because the English like to call everything apple, uh, but it's also called uh, chopped up pudding fruit by a lot of people, which is supposed to be a good descriptor of how it tastes. Uh, it's supposed to be very high vitamin C, so I imagine it's quite high sugar or something else quite sweet to, to mask that and make it taste chocolatey, uh, but we'll find out. It's not getting many companion plants because this is quite a well planted area and it is quite sheltered here, uh, but we are going to be giving it a piece of the aloe arborescence and some pieces of peperomia obtusifolia just to try and keep the chickens from kicking it too much because this is very close to them and, and it is at high risk of kicking. Second up today, we're going with a species of Bunchosia, and I'm not sure which species we're going with. I'm hoping it's Bunchosia argentia, which is sometimes called the peanut butter fruit. Uh, that name is also sometimes applied to P Bunchosia globulifera, but as far as I can tell from the specimens on Kew Garden's website, this is much more like the leaves of Bunchosia argentia, which is good for me because Bunch Bunchosia argentia is from periodically dry parts of South America, so, so from, from areas uh, in the north of South America that receive very little rainfall during their, their dry period uh, and actually quite a lot of trees from that area can become invasive in Zambia which isn't ideal but it does in indicate that they can survive without any additional care. Um, Bunchosia glob globulifera is from significantly further south into significantly wetter areas that are wet year-round and not really an ideal area for things to be planted here unless you guarantee you can water them all the time. Um, hopefully, again, we've got Argentia. Now this is going to be getting a piece of the Dracaena fragrance because this is going on the edge of shelter where it will get afternoon sun blocked off almost entirely by the Cassia Senna that recently dropped a branch around some of my saplings. Um, but it's going to hopefully get a decent amount of morning sun here which should help it grow quite well. It's not going to be huge by any means, but it should help close this thicket in. It's going to be going between a citrus tree and a and a custard apple, so both quite shrubby trees as well, so it should blend in quite well and form a mixed canopy with those not closely related to either of them, so again, it should be ideal. Um, it's also going to be getting a Siphonochylus kirkii as, as a companion plant. This is one of the native wild gingers. I don't know if it has any medicinal uses. Some of the other Siphonochylus do, uh, and it probably does. It should also have a nice flower and form a nice wet season ground cover, as well as just adding a bit of sort of chemical diversity to what's growing in here and a bit of physical interest. And then we're going to be getting a piece of aloe cameroni, which is one of the native aloes. It's a nice little bushy piece already. This should spread out quite nicely and then when it comes around to next October and we have the, it very dry and the sun in the south, this should be sheltering at least the base of this plant, which should mean that even if the worst comes to the worst and a lot of the plant does die back, the base should be sheltered and have the best chance of coming back up. And that should be everything for today, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed it, and if you haven't enjoyed it, thank you for watching anyway. Please tune in again tomorrow because we'll be planting something different if I manage to do so before it rains, but we'll see.